Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Nodderman, author of the book Don't Be a Stranger and consultant in the Rodan and Field skincare business industry. And I have been utilizing this uh, channel as a way of sharing personal and professional development resources, readings, tips and tricks, both in the skincare world as well as just opportunities to invest in yourself and others. Um, so today I wanted to take a moment and share a reading from a book called Changes That Heal by Dr. Henry Cloud. Specifically, I'm going to be reading some excerpts out of the chapter, chapter 12, when we fail to accept the good and the bad, we tend to see the world in a skewed way. And so I wanted to share with you a few of the excerpts that I found particularly meaningful in this book. So like it or not, we live in an imperfect world. As we all know, the world is not purely good. Fortunately, however, the world is not purely bad either. Rather, the world is a sometimes confusing mixture of good and bad, and people who can't deal with that fact develop a lot of different types of problems. And so the chapter walks through examples of what some of those challenges are, as well as a few suggestions on overcoming those barriers. Now, I will say the book is written from a Christian point of view, so there are going to be times where it references God as your higher power. I would always encourage you to apply what you can, take the best, leave the rest as far as whether or not uh, applies to your value system and how you choose to live your life. And so I might refer to God, I might refer to your higher power, um, but I'd like to share with you some of what I found particularly meaningful in hopes that it can help someone watching this video. So uh, I move on into one section where it talks about I have unacceptable feelings. I have this conversation quite often with clients in my world where I work. Um, some people condemn themselves for their less than ideal feelings, such as neediness, sadness, sex, and weakness. These human feelings are not sinful in themselves, but have been judged as bad by the ideal self. So what I wrote here, a couple of notes are on like accepting, accepting yourself for what you are, accepting your thoughts for what they are, accepting your feelings for just how they show up. And be aware, be aware of what's going on inside your mind, inside your heart, and don't necessarily act on your awarenesses, but just recognize them. This is a lot of what the concepts of mindfulness are built around. And, um, and breathe and ask God or ask your higher power to remove those that potentially are not serving you. But be careful not to judge yourself harshly. A lot of times we compare ourselves to our perfect ideal standard of how we want to be. And then we reject anything that shows up as less than or different. And the reality is they're simply part of the course of our journey. I can't stand an imperfect world is another quote cited here. This distorted view keeps many people slaves to perfectionism. They think they cannot be happy in a less than ideal world. They become so disappointed that they reject whatever is less than ideal and they miss out on the real. They will leave me if they find out. A fear of abandonment underlies many attempts to be perfect. People believe often their connection with other people is so shaky that a mistake or a flaw will sever it. Actually, opening up about our weaknesses serves to cement relationships and bonding. Keeping them hidden keeps that connection weak and superficial. This happens in a lot of marriages. A lot of people view God as God expects me to be all good. The book talks about nothing could be farther from the truth, but no distortion is more common than this one. God has said repeatedly that we are sinners and he expects us to fall over and over again. He knows our frame. We must comprehend the way in which God sees us, both to be humbled away from our perfectionism and to be awestruck by his grace. But I mentioned here, it's an opportunity when we're going through difficulty to call on your higher power for help and guidance and realize that you're not alone. It then moves on into chapter 13, learning to accept both good and bad. And I wanted to point out a few things that I found really moving here. Uh, it talks about the benefits of confessing. In order to feel God's forgiveness, we need acceptance from his people. That's all about connection. If we confess our offenses to one another and are accepted in spite of them, our relationship to the ideal changes. We begin to internalize the acceptance we feel from others and our conscious changes it becomes more loving. And this for a lot of people is the, the idea, the concept of making amends, of asking forgiveness, of really taking responsibility for the mistakes that we make in relationships. We all make mistakes and it takes humility and strength and courage to acknowledge when you feel you've made one and to care enough about your relationships to simply be willing to take responsibility and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I made a mistake and how do I make it right? 
There's a great book actually called The Five Languages of Apology. I'm pretty sure it's by the same author who wrote The Five Love Languages. It's a great read. Um, you know, and also in my book, Don't Be a Stranger, I talk about the importance of humility uh, and emotional intelligence and emotional awareness in creating connections with strangers and not wanting to one up people and somebody share something with you, being able to recognize, you know, I can absolutely help raise other people up and it's not about me in that moment. Um, as condemnation goes out of that relationship, greater and greater peace grows and the person becomes less and less divided between the ideal and the real self. We often tend to compare ourselves again to this idea of like the perfection, the ideal self. The reality is we're not necessarily our ideal selves, we're our real selves and we don't want to constantly feel like we're not measuring up to the standard of perfection. The ideal self can become a goal and not a demand. And the true self can be loved along the way. One of the last lines, uh, I thought, actually I have a few more. We must forgive others' debts in order to be healed. And if we don't, we are handcuffing ourselves to the one who hurts us. Forgiveness is the knife that will cut through those handcuffs. You know, during our monthly Second Wednesday Nuggets of Wisdom online event, there's often a quote shared about the idea of forgiveness. And I love the Mother Teresa quote, I believe it is, it says that um, holding on to anger and resentment is like swallowing poison and expecting it to hurt the other person. The truth is the only person you're holding is yourself. Forgiveness is not about saying that what someone else did is okay. It is simply about saying that I have grace and that none of us are perfect and that I'm not gonna hold on to this anymore, right? I'm gonna detach from the um, kind of more volatile hold that something like that might have on you and allowing a higher being to, to really be a part of that forgiveness process. When people deny their sad feelings, they harden their heart and they uh, lose touch with tender grace-giving aspects. An important aspect to sadness is tenderness and if we can't feel sad, we get cold-hearted. Fear is another negative emotion that signals anger. I'm sorry, that signals danger. The danger may be real or imaginary, but we must be aware of our fear to work through it. And so then the author concludes the section with other skills needed to integrate the good and the bad. So among those are our sadness, our fear, that these are necessary emotions to motivate actions, to motivate connections that can really help to heal some of our pain. Um, he also goes on to say prayer, that besides confessing your sins, ask God, ask your high power to make you aware of things you might be ignoring. Ask God to shine his light into your soul and reveal anything that you are unaware of. And then ask his forgiveness for it. Rework your sense of the ideal. Check out what needs to be eliminated from your picture of what ideal would look like. Challenge your distorted views of God, yourself, and others. Listen to the way that you respond to the less than ideal. Do you deny the good? Do you attack and judge? Many people are stunned to find out how much they attack themselves and others. Stay connected to others when they are less than ideal and you will begin to value real relationship and stop demanding idealism. Do not discard others when they are less than perfect. Actively see the goal as well, I'm sorry, the good as well as the bad and love the whole person. Make reality your friend. Process and value negative feelings. Most problems with negative feelings come from a fear about them. Negative feelings will not kill you, but avoiding them may. When the faults come, embrace them and love them so that you can feel closer to others and expect faults from creation. Expect things to go wrong. You will not be surprised. You will be able to value that less than ideal car, that less than ideal house or city that you have or live in. It may not be ideal, but it is probably good enough. I hope that this is helpful to somebody out there listening. And I appreciate the time that you take to tune into the station. I hope that I'll have some other videos coming up that you will find um, good value in. If you have any ideas for future videos, please don't reach out to me. And please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Please do reach out to me. <laughs> if you have a book that you'd like to offer as uh, something you'd like me to consider looking at or send me as something that we might be able to share an excerpt from, please, please don't hesitate to contact me. And this is Alicia tuning out with my little sidekick, Kaylee. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays.